G'day folks, Pat Curley, LearnCigarBoxGuitar.com, there it is right there. Now this video um, is all about uh, showing you how to uh, convert uh, standard music notation, so you know, the dots, you find, a, you find a book somewhere or a file on the internet that's got some music notation on it and you want to learn to play it, but you can't read it so you need to put it into tab. This is what we're on about right now. You don't need any music theory to do this, but you do need this thing. Uh, you get it from musescore.org, and it's free, it's open source, it's reliable, it's safe. Uh, it says here Mac, but I'm on a Mac, that's why. It's available for Windows, etc. Um, look it up, look for reviews, it's got a big help system, it's got a great community of people using and helping each other out. Um, musescore.org. No need to be concerned about getting that on your computer. It's excellent and it's free. What you can do with that is a whole lot of different things, including create tabs for three and four string guitars. Now, um, they don't have uh, default instruments for three and four string guitars, but if you go to my website, go to free stuff, down the bottom of the tab templates, uh, you can download these templates. There's one on a three string. Takes you to my uh, Google Drive. You download that. And when you open it in MuseScore, that's your default. This is the, the MuseScore fo folder, a uh, window. You open a new one. The default is that. So it's just treble clef full four time. You will accidentally learn some music theory as you do this, um, but um, that's not the aim of the exercise. If you then open that uh, use that three string template, you got this one. So it's the same as we had before. Now it's in the key of G. That's what that little little sharp sign there means, and it's got the three string tab. It's uh, tabbed out for G, D, G, G on the bass, G on the bottom, D, G on the top. So what you can do now with this is you can uh, get from your book or your, your music notation file, add some stuff. Now if I go hit N on the uh, keyboard, I get this, which means I can input a note. Now depending on which note I've got up here, whether it's a half beat, whole beat, two beats, etc. Even if you don't know what they mean, you're just copying it from the, the book. So you just find that one and you stick it in there wherever it goes. Let's say it goes there. Then it's got a couple of these things. Right? And then it's got one of them. And that's your whole bar. Now the way this works, these things are worth one beat. They're worth half a beat each. So that's another one there. One beat, two beat. That's worth two. So it's one, two, three, four. Four in the bar. That's as much theory as I'm going to work on today. It's not that hard. That's worth one. They're worth half. They're worth two. If you look up here, you can see that progression. Half a beat, one beat, two beats, four beats. The dot does stuff. Don't want to go into that. These here, these things here are your rests. So if you click on a rest, see it's changed that to a two-beat rest now. If I want that as a one-beat rest, I click on that one, and I've got two one-beat rests. Yeah, so all, all you need to know really, half beat, one beat, two beats, four beat. These ones, uh, that's a quarter of a beat, a sixteenth of a beat, etc. It goes f even further down. Um, but you, you're not going to see too many of those. Um, so if you see a rest, one of these things, um, that's how you do that. If you're not sure what rests are, the software will teach you. That's a half a beat rest. That little, little thing there, that thing there, is two beat rest, right? The other thing, as far as the theory goes, that's important here. Oh, first of all, let's just go put those dots back in. Right, once you've got that in, look at this. Copy and paste. There's your tab. That's how simple it is. You put the dots in there, copy it into the tab file, and it gives you the tab. Now, um, what you might find when you, uh, let's just delete all that, when you 
go to your book is that it doesn't have this one sharp up here. You might need to put a different signature in there. Here's how you do that. You go to key signatures, huh? open that up, and you can see that there's our one sharp G major. Now if the, if the music that you're copying for, from has got four sharps, it's in E, you just do that. Well, first of all, hang on, sorry. You gotta select everything, and then you go that. Right? Now you're in the key of E, and off you go, you just copy it in. You, need to, you better make sure you do that first, though, it's gonna be wrong. That's the first thing you need to do, you can make sure you get your key signature right. Usually it's in 4-4, four, four. if it's not, Time signatures change to three or two or six eight or twelve eight or whatever. Yeah, there those two there are the only one the main ones that you're going to use. These are fun to play with as well. Get in and have a go. Um, the main one is this one here, um, breaks and spaces. So that just changes your layout. So if I wanted to put a break there, I'd do that. So now it's um, I've only got two beat two bars in the line. But, you know, you just play with them. The main ones are the key signature and the time signature, and then these different notes up here. And you can create your notes and then stick them in here. So if I've got a tune in the key of E, for example, uh, let's just put a few dots in in the key of E. Right, hang on. I go N, so I can put them in. And I go E, G sharp. A, B, right, copy that to there, there it is, now because we're tuned to the key of G I might want to play that in the key of G, so what I do is I go to my tools here, transpose it's called when you change keys, transpose, I want to go down, do I, no I want to go up, to G, okay, takes it up to there, now it's in the key of G, the same tune, I'm going to copy that into my tab, and there it is, in the new key, alright, so remember that that one sharp there is G, and if you don't remember which one's which, the software will tell you, yeah, so don't forget to have a look at those things at the start of your music when you go to put them in. Um, apart from that, you just it's quite mechanical. Yeah? Even to the point where another, another cool trick you can do, you can get... Um, I've, just, I've just got this website, 8notes.com eight here, right? And I've got this um, Habanera from Carmen. Dum, dum, da, dum, da, dum, 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 right? A you know? Tricky little little piece. That's it there. Now, I don't want to go and copy all those dots in, so here's what I do. I download the MIDI file. I've already done that. I'm not going to do it again. So then I go to here, File, Open. There's that MIDI file. There it is. So it's opened it, and I can play it. But... I don't want the whole thing, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select that bar, just the, just the top line, just the melody, right? And then I'm going to select this bar. Right? So shift-click on that last one. I've got just that line. I'll copy that into my template. And Bob's your uncle. Now, what I didn't do, you'll notice, is check the key signature, four sharps. Not to worry. I can change it now. So I'll just go key signature, four sharps, that's E. And you may have noticed that a lot of the, these accidentals have gone away because they're over here now. I don't need to explain that right now. You probably don't care. So that's all in the key of E. All right. So if I copy that to here, I've got the tab in the key of E. Now you'll see that that's really high up and that's unplayable, that, that red one there. Right? And everything's just really high up. What's happened is that guitar notation, which is what this top line is in the template, 
is an octave higher than standard notation. So if I select everything, go back to transpose by interval down an octave, now it's playable. Okay. It's still in the key of E, but you know you can play it in E if you want. I would prefer to play it in G because I'm tuned to G, so I transpose it by interval. No, to key. Right? I'm going to go down this time to G major. There we are. That looks a whole lot easier to play um, now that it's in the key that our guitar is tuned to. And it's not just some, you know, some simple little folk tune. It's Bizet's Habanera, yeah? And there it is in tab. You can play it on your three string. All the notes are there. Sometimes they won't be. Some some tunes you want to play, the range is too high or whatever. But, I mean, you've got two two octaves you can play easily. So you most tunes you'd be right with. Um, for, for example, this one. Um and again, you just play it if you want to listen. Oh, that's too fast. I'll show you you can fix that. If you go to tempo, drag, uh, first of all, select one, drag that up to there. What have I done? Oh, so you select a note or a rest and then you click on that. Then you can change the tempo. That 80 is quite slow. And it's probably pretty good for the tune. So that's get to know this software. Um, you'll learn heaps and you'll open up a whole lot of different resources for different tunes that you can play without having to ask people and um, without having to understand a lot of theory. What will happen, you will um, become less scared of the notation, less scared of the theory and want to know more because it's not that hard really. When that happens... You go to my website, free stuff, and go to the theory course. There's a section there on reading the dots, but a whole heap of other theory as well. LearnCigarboxGuitar.com and MuseScore. Have fun with that.